opportunity to make day two and start getting some of those ever important championship points. Nothing too terrible, I think, in either player's prizes. It's a little awkward to see two research on Natalie's end. It's pretty important to draw through the deck, and Blissey is one of these decks that does not have a real dedicated draw engine. You are kind of reliant on your supporters. We also see one mill tank and three energy cards over on Abe's end. Two energy shouldn't be too big of a deal since they are at the bottom of his prizes. Yeah, you start to worry about the with the professor's research. We do see cards like Zinnia's Resolve and other interesting ways, just trying to get those energies into the discard pile as early as possible. So when you see two in the prizes there, could be a little more difficult, but of course, still have some cards like Radiant Brew Ninja that can help out. And here we go. The fist bump has commenced. Game one getting underway. Once again, the win and in. Get a win in this one. Move on to day two. Lose, and your tournament run is over. Natalie starts things off with a Blissey V in the active spot and also has that Radiant Greninja, not something you see too often or would maybe have to do a double take when you look at it here in this deck, but it's something that most people, when they play the Blissey deck, do tend to go with since getting your energy cards in the discard pile makes a lot of sense, and Greninja does not have to discard just basic energy. It can discard those specials, as we see with that double turbo. Yeah, nice to see that in the discard pile early on. Not much else to do this turn, and we do see that Cape of Toughness on the mill tank there, as we do know that sometimes it can be a little tricky to knock out that Pokemon as it won't be affected by those Vs on the other side. So how is this matchup going to play out? Obviously, I feel like Natalie is probably very well tested against the Lugia deck. I mean, she plays pretty much this deck exclusively at tournaments, so she is very well aware of what strategies she wants to go for, but as Abe... I would have to wonder if he's ever played against a Blissey <laughs> Mill Tank deck. So for both players here, what's the general strategy you think going to be? Yeah, it's it's interesting as Abe is certainly going to be put in some awkward spots early on trying to deal with this Blissey. You, you want to attack into it and take knockouts, and usually that's going to be by way of powerful energies on the Lugia V trying to get the additional damage that you need. But you could see... a. Cape of Toughness or even a V-Guard energy, anything could get in the way to help and keep this Blissey along, uh, alive as long as possible. Yeah, and how does it work out as well with Miltank? Because obviously Abe has a lot of single prize attackers, but you know, things like Archeops only deal 120 damage when Miltank has a Cape of Toughness on it. It's a little tough to get over. Yeah, and then you would start to wonder how you're going to use every single one of those resources. Uh, the uh, amazing Evatol, that's going to line up great with potentially knocking out a Blissey V, but then how do you use your Radiant Charizard? As 250 damage is perfect for Blissey, but you're going to have to start using some of those single prize Pokemon to attack into the Miltink at some point. Marnie being played on Natalie's end. Abe was able to get one Archeops in the discard pile, but it was via the read the win. So did not even play a supporter on turn number one. Even still, though, Natalie will be playing that Marnie and slamming the path to the peak as well, trying to slow Abe down and limit the options to find a V-Star on the next turn. Natalie also plays down that Evil Tall. That's another pretty key card in this matchup. She is playing three copies of this Cry of Destruction Evil Tall. It kind of feels like Blissey almost has a little bit of a control element to it, or disruption maybe. It would be more of a fitting way to describe it. Yeah, no, absolutely. It can it can change the pace when it needs to. As you can, of course, go for that very aggressive route with the Blissey, but you're going to be at this point in the mid game occasionally where you have a lot of energies that fall from the Blissey. Either it gets knocked out or you heal it with a Sharon's Care or something like that, and then you can take this turn off use the Cry of Destruction with Evatol, you can attack with the Mill Tank, slow down a little bit, and then start to regain your composure, get that Blissey built up with all of those energies that you lost early on, and try to close out the game with prize cards. Pretty interesting to see the Mana Fee being grabbed right away, maybe wanting to protect against the potential Amazing Rare Raikou. That's something that could lay down a lot of damage onto Natalie's side of the field, so she really valued getting Mana Fee set up, and now it will be the pass over to Abe, who does have Pumpkaboo and Lost Vacuum, but there's only one Archeops in the discard right now. Yeah, this might be single Archeops territory, though. Your opponent didn't do very much. <laughs> this is this was sure. a very slow turn. We only saw Path. This was before even an energy was able to come down with the Radiant Greninja or attached for the turn. Marnie found no energy, so Blissey is doing absolutely nothing right now. Abe really gets to control how this game plays out and could really start to go aggressive here if he uses that Pump Kaboo or the the lost vacuum now. He couldn't even get a knockout with the Blissey. Well, <laughs> now he can since he drew an energy card because with just one Archeops, he'd only be able to get two energy cards. And while one of them could be double turbo energy, it would actually take him 
I guess if he got You'd double turbo plus the, powerful, and right? Powerful and that's counteract. kind of a tough use of your powerful energy, right? Agreed. You, you want to make sure that every single time that you're amplifying the damage that it's to its maximum value is uh, you're going to have to be working through the capes or using those uh, on the Archaeops to try to get through the, the mill tank and the extra hit points that it have with the cape of toughness. So now Lost Vacuum will Lost Zone. One card from Abe's hand and also Lost Zone. A stadium or tool card in play. Choosing to get rid, of course, that path to the peak. And now flips the V-Star marker and uses Primal Turbo right away. This can grab two energy cards out of the deck. And we know that there is a capture energy waiting in the hand as well. So this Blissey V is going down shortly. And that doesn't leave much on the other side for Natalie. The only saving grace now is that at least the path was countered. And it doesn't feel great, obviously, that you're going to get knocked out. But it does leave some top decks open. Any energy could lead into potential drawing more cards. I think there was a Zinnias that was drawn off of the Marnie. So certainly could see something happen next turn. And really all you need to do is find a twin or double turbo and you can cry of destruction, remove all these energies from play. So Abe is actually choosing to load a powerful on the active alongside a double turbo and hold on to the capture for a turn, maybe waiting to see what Natalie does, what Pokemon he wants to grab next turn. And of course this capture energy does function very nicely as a pivot option on something like the Archaeops. The problem does become whenever you only have one Archaeops in play, you can't accelerate everything you may possibly want. Yeah, it, it, you want to make sure that you're maximizing every time that you're attaching, and it's pretty likely that your opponent's going to use Cry of Destruction, but we actually see the Miltank promotion here, so we'll see if Natalie feels like this Zinnia is going to draw into anything. And here it is, Zinnia's Resolve, only seeing four cards. It's a supporter card we don't see too often, but you discard two cards from your hand in order to draw a card for each Pokemon your opponent has in play. Oh, tough. Finds the powerful energy, but that's just going to be the single energy attachment there. At least Miltank is going to be sticking around a little while. Yes. You would have to see the retreat here into a different Pokemon to get a relevant attack off. Yes, into so the Miracle Body. Of course, thanks to that Miracle Body ability, Miltank cannot be damaged by Pokemon V. And of course, Pokemon V-Star are Pokemon V. So Abe's only option to attack into something like the Miltank will be Pokemon like the Archaeops, will be Pokemon like the Radiant Charizard, potentially. Even Oranguru could get in there with a couple powerful the energies. Down. <laughs> <laughs> with a Cape of Toughness, though, I wouldn't expect to see that. But yeah, I'm curious to see how Abe will want to approach this situation. With only one Archaeops in play, can he afford to retreat off something like this double turbo? Yeah, I wonder if this turn is now spent grabbing Luminion, and then you reach for the boss's orders, mm. start to target down a Pokemon like that. Even it's all that you're worried about in the future, and you can, you can deal with that now. And then, of course, you'll have the retreat available because you're not worried about losing those energies anytime soon. Yeah, while... Well, the Lumin or sorry, the Mill Tank is really difficult to deal with. The Evil Tall feels like it's the real threat, right? Because that can just come up and start to remove your energy cards from play. And that's a situation as Abe you do not want to be in. Yeah, we've seen a lot of players have to deal with this when they're playing against control and they've got the four cry of destruction. You start to do the math and basically you have to take at least three prize cards before they get rolling or they're just going to steal too many energies off your board right. and you don't have a way to close out unless you chain Luminion and that's never where you want to be. And this is exactly the play that Abe is going for. Boss's orders being grabbed. Have to imagine Evil Tall is the target. Definitely more valuable than targeting down something like the Manaphy. Radiant Greninja not doing the most here either. So bring up that evil tall, deal with the threat, like we mentioned, um, and take that out of play. You don't really care too much about the mill tank. It's not going to be doing too much damage with route. Deals 10 base damage and then 20 more for each Pokemon you have in play. So it can start to put on some pressure. It does force you to deal with it at some point. But for now, evil tall is definitely the greater uh, threat to eye up. Now the only decision for Abe is... Got to get some energies down as you only have the single Archaeops. And this is pretty awkward as well, as you see that Speedwing lines up really great for the, the knockout on the mill tank. But do you ever want that Pokemon in the active spot? If it gets knocked out, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. The good news is, when you're playing against this deck, you're not really worried about getting knocked out in one turn. It doesn't really work like that for Blissey. It needs to charge up, get additional energies down. Mill tank certainly isn't going to get the, the one-hit knockout. It never reaches that 150 point. So you actually can feel relatively comfortable seeing the Archaeops there, and I do love seeing at least one powerful. Uh, Going to need that second one to get the knockout, I believe, though. 
Yeah, threatening as much damage as possible seems good. There is, of course, one powerful already in play, and Boss's Order, sure enough, brings up Evil Tall. Get that Pokemon into the active. Of course, Boss's Order is the supporter card. Switch one of your opponent's bench Pokemon with the active. We see Evil Tall coming up and being knocked out. Abe is now three prizes down, three prizes taken. Natalie looking for a way to respond. Well, it's going to be on the back of Marnie. Top decked Boss isn't going to help out here. Five cards to help out, and there is, of course, still that Radiant Greninja that could help drawing, but first you need to see at least an energy if you want to get rolling. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> There's nothing there. Uh, yeah, no energy to discard with the Greninja, and no even supporter for the next turn. Yeah, couldn't discard with the Greninja, couldn't attack with the mill tank. It's just a, a draw and a pass. There is the path to the peak, but maybe Natalie doesn't even want to play that as Summoning Star has already been used and she doesn't want to cut off her own access to Radiant Greninja. Yeah, you would shut off the second Luminion V from your opponent, but I don't think you're terribly worried about that at this point. You're just thinking about yourself, and rightfully so. Well, you might be worried about it if your opponent drew a quick ball. Oh, no. <laughs> and could Boss's Order is your evil tall again? That's All right, that makes it a little <laughs> more difficult there. So. And I wonder if that's the route Abe is going to go. He did find the quick ball. Let's see if that other Luminion is in the deck. And also, uh, he's chosen to play this Evolution Incense, I think, ideally to try to thin, wants to grab a... A, a potential Archaeops out and Let's just discard go to game it. Two. And Natalie, yeah, I think this is a smart concede. Recognize your opponent got too far ahead. Scoop up the cards. Let's go to game two. Abe winning game number one. Yeah, I think regardless of how Abe plays that out with the boss's orders or just knocking out the active with the, the Archaeops, he's going to be in a favorable position to easily close out game number one. And this is perfectly spotted from Natalie understanding I need every second on that clock right now if I want to yeah. win two games. Yeah, and that's really what it comes down to is the time management. It's really difficult to know when to concede in the Pokemon TCG, and no player ever wants to give up. You feel like you've always got a chance, and even if you don't, you want to stick it out to the end and see what maybe could have happened. But Natalie recognizing that the time is her real enemy in this spot. It's not Abe, it's the clock. Chip, I have video footage of me playing a Bridget and then conceding in game 14, <laughs> or like round 14 of a tournament. I love conceding, I, especially when you've won the first game. I so. remember you and I played in a regionals on a stream at one point in like round 10 or something like that. And uh, I played a Bridget and started moving cards around and you said, yeah, I'm just going to concede and go to the next game because yeah. your hand was bad. You that's, were like, that's get my, me out of here. That's my, my strategy is I, when I see that we're playing best two out of three, it only means two games. I'm not, I'm l looking to play three games. It's yes. not going to happen. I just want to play two games going first really well. Yeah. <laughs> so Natalie here, like you mentioned, going first will most likely be choosing to go first in this one. The Blissey deck does not do much on turn one, and it really doesn't do much turn after turn. It's attach an energy, play a supporter card, attack. Right, yep. uh, it, it, that's all you need to do. It's really kind of a beautifully simple deck in that sense, but there are still uh, another layer of options available as far as how you want to approach each matchup with your myriad of attackers, right? Something like Evil Tall is not gonna be a great attacker into Lost Box, a deck that plays all basic energy cards, but it's what you're gonna really want to lean on in matchups like Lugia and things like Mew as well. Yeah, there's a there's an in, impending doom that, that feels like the, that's always going on with the Blissey. You can see your fate and you understand how the match is gonna go, because everything is always on the board or in the discard pile. And sure enough, when you have all those cards lined up, we might see Abe in a position where he has to scoop things up really quickly. Yeah. So it can Absolutely. it can definitely uh, change really quick. We got a little Politoed there cheering Natalie on. We'll see if Politoed's got enough strength to bring the rain and get <laughs> Natalie through this next one. Force a game number three. Well, maybe maybe the frogs are all hanging out together as <laughs> Radiant Greninja needs some help. Yes. It, it was only able to draw two cards last game, and then nothing was going right. We see the prize cards coming out now. No, oh, no, I the jinxed Greninja, it. Greninja, no, I'm Kyle. sorry. <laughs> oh, a couple of Marnie as well. One of those Team Yell Towel used to heal one of Natalie's Pokemon. Of course, Abe prizing a couple of energy cards, three energies to be exact, and that Amazing Rare Evil Tall, something to note as well. Well, if you're going to lose the Radiant Greninja, this is a pretty great way to start the turn. You got that Pat to the Peak locked in. Oh. Blissey's ready to go with the double turbo also. Yeah, but what do you do when your opponent opens up with double evolution incense and ultra ball? <laughs> well, you wait 30 seconds for them to play all the cards, and then you cry. <laughs> yeah, and that's exactly what Abe has done here. He does not have a supporter in hand currently, so 
uh, isn't even going to have access to something like Luminion as well, thanks to that Path to the Peak coming into play. So Abe may not even use Ultra Ball for that second Archeops, might even choose to go with something like the Read the Wind to try to draw some more cards. Seems yeah. pretty strong in this spot. Yeah, I agree. You think that your opponent is probably going to be focused on themselves and not go for a Marnie. They're often trying to get those energies in the discard pile in the opening turns. So you probably have a window there where you can get away with just read the wind and get those cards where you need to. It is a little risky when you don't get the second Archeops into the discard pile. So maybe you see the Ultra Ball played for uh, maybe the, the Pump Kaboon. You just hold it. Yeah, a Ranguru could be really nice as well. That's a Set up like the V-Star on top potentially. But Abe is actually going to choose to just use Read the Wind. Actually not even going to get down double Archeops. Really interesting. What do you think of this line? Yeah, there's, there's two ways to read it. It's either he's playing way too quick and he needs to calm down, or it's genius because it looks like he has a bad hand. And I think that could definitely be interpreted as such. And right now it looks great because we saw the supporter for the turn from Natalie. It was just the professor's research drawing all those cards. And Abe's got a god hand that he's sitting on, and he's going to have a really <laughs> great turn too. Yeah, he's got just about everything he could need. I mean, that Ultra Ball can even find out that Pumpkaboo. Natalie will get off the attack here on turn two. Blissful Blast dealing 10 damage and then 30 more damage for each <laughs> energy card attached to the Blissey. Something just feels right about <laughs> seeing Blissey doing well at our regional championships. Yeah, it's uh, it's good to bring it back. We haven't seen this do well since, what, was it Milwaukee? And that's right. When? Yeah. Connor Lavelle got second place. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been fun to, uh, to see this. Have another go at it here on the stream, and uh, Abe is definitely going to try to cut that short as we do see the Evolution instance now. Second arc, yep, surely to be lined up here, and this is uh, this could be a big turn depending on what the additional cards from Read the Wind and the top deck were. Yeah, we I don't think I see more. something like the Lost Vacuum. That would be a way for for Abe to get the easy knockout here on this Blissey, but. To be honest, he might not even need anything like that. Has a powerful energy already attached, and while there were three energy cards in Abe's prize cards, I don't think a single one of them was a powerful. Um, that's going to be a pretty powerful Lugia <laughs> V-Star. <laughs> and a pretty powerful turn, as after this is all said and done, I mean, I totally expect to see Abe here just go in with this Lugia, get all the powerful energies onto the Lugia V-Star, and take a one-hit knockout on this Blissey and leave Natalie with just a little Dunsparce in play. <laughs> roll out. <laughs> no, yeah, roll away. That's what Dunsparce is thinking after this game. Yeah, this is not what Natalie was looking to see. This is such a big turn. Has yeah, Abe, the Lugia V-Star in hand. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Abe, okay, did play that. Ultra Ball grabbed that Pumpkaboo. Now we'll get rid of that Path to the Peak with that Pumpkin Pit ability. Summoning Star can be used. Two Archeops coming into play. Primal Turbo will accelerate three powerful colorless energies into play most likely this turn. And even could combine it with something like a Marnie yeah. as well as he's got Luminion. Yep, your, your opponent just used Professor's Research. They drew a bunch of cards, but didn't do anything with any of those cards. Just... Uh, holding on to a bunch of resources now, and maybe you do sense weakness there and try to limit the hand size, leave him with just Dunsparce and fresh cards. We do see the Powerful's coming down. Needs one more to get the job done. Yep, and it should be in the deck, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there it is. Woo. Sure enough, and Natalie just has to nod her head and kind of sigh as well as your opponent is setting up perfectly. And even though you, it's a matchup you are very capable of winning, this position is looking rough. She's going to need some help here off of these four cards from the Marnie. Yeah, you want to be in a situation where you're finding those energies over and over again, using the Blissey V and continually doing a decent amount of damage to your yeah. opponent. And or just getting a couple Evil Tall in play. Even. I, I almost feel like is even better, right? You re I, I think Evil Tall is really going to be Natalie's main strategy in this matchup. And with just four cards and a couple supporter cards already in her discard, by the way, it's going to be tough. Yeah, it's really crucial that you're able to hit the cards like the Powerful Energy or the Double Turbos, and it's just none of that's happening right now as Natalie's going to be just left with the Dunsparce and whatever cards she found there. I do see that Evil Tall. Evil Tall, but no, just the pass. Oh, just the pass, and Abe wow, doesn't even play the pass to the peak, Abe. Oh, and Abe just top decks the boss. Boss in hand. I think he drew it for turn, Kyle. That's so sick. Going to continue to keep playing out cards, thin the deck down a little more, improve those odds from 99 to potentially 100, but 
This is unreal. Uh, there's actually just oh, game with the Raikou. Oh, he just has it. Yeah, yeah, he has the Aurora Energies lined oh, up. That's going to be a beautiful, amazing shot to take a double knockout here. Close wow. out in round number nine and move into day two in under 20 minutes. That was a fast one. Congratulations to Abe moving on to day two. What an amazing play Woo! with that amazing Raikou to close out the game. You definitely have to feel for Natalie, though. She is known for this deck. This is her signature deck. She plays it to every single tournament. She's made day two many times in the past, but just in this spot comes up one game short. And there was really nothing she could have done differently either. Yeah, just continually just left with no cards to get the job done. Played it all perfect too. Had the paths locked in every single turn. Abe had the perfect answer. Yes. I mean, that's the story of uh, Lugia, right? It just seems to always find a way to have those answers. When it's it feels good, it's like good. when it's good, it's I mean, there's a reason it's the best deck in the format. No yeah. matter how hard you try to counter it, evil tall or not, it's just sometimes not enough. Yeah, and uh, it's also cool to just see all of the different attack 